at the December meeting or following the December meeting of the US FOMC, so the Federal Reserve meeting, they did make an announcement in relation to their view to ease back or to taper on their quantitative easing stimulus program. This is a significant announcement because it does break the ice in relation to what the markets and investors have been questioning over the last six to nine months. What's going to happen is that essentially they've decided that they are going to ease back um, by $10 billion their program of monthly purchases of long-term interest rate bearing assets. Now this is assets like government treasury bonds and US, uh, US mortgages securities. They are essentially what's going to happen is that the level of mortgage purchases that they're going to make per month is going to reduce by $5 billion down to $35 billion per month. It is still significant. The level of US government treasuries that they're going to buy is going to reduce from 45 down to $40 billion a month. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is the start of what is the intention that the um, Federal Reserve has basically announced, and this will start to occur over the course of 2014. This is essentially what's going to dictate um, the pace and the sort of significance of that in relation to markets. When we start to think about what does that mean? You know, what does the reduction in these purchases mean? Essentially, for the bonds to start off with, more direct asset purchases that's sort of coming through from a very price insensitive buyer. They don't care what the price is, they just go out there into the market and buy them. When you start to remove that price insensitive buyer, obviously you're going to see higher long-term rates eventuate from that. Now that's a significant outcome for the US because their economy is more reliant on the long-term rates than say it is in Australia, which we're much more focused on cash rates. So it does start to have a, an impact in relation to US housing in particular and some of the other interest rate sensitive sectors. It's really important in relation to that. Um, in relation to some of the risk assets, we need to start to consider that if rates actually start to move up in the long end, that's not necessarily going to be beneficial for economic growth coming through, and that's going to put a little bit more pressure on equity markets. We didn't see it after the announcement, right? We saw a pop in equity markets, but that was more because people had already expected it to happen. And it was very much sell the rumor, buy the fact in relation to this particular outcome. Uh, when I start to think about currencies and what does it mean for the currency, um, very much US dollar strength as a result of this because it, it starts to uh, ease the burden that the US financial system will have going forward. All right? And that actually means it puts the US dollar into a slightly stronger position because people have confidence that the US government is going to be able to pay on its treasury bill, uh, on its treasury um, interest burden. Now that's an important outcome as well because it means that there is likely to be a capital outflow from the way that the money has been distributed around the world over the last 12 months back into the US. All right? So you'll see some capital flow in relation to a lot of that outcome as well. And that's going to actually affect a lot of emerging market currencies and emerging market um, equities. It's also going to affect countries like Australia as well because some of that money has ended up in Australia and is likely to be repatriated home as well. Thank you.